welcome to the Wasting Time podcast. This is episode 20. Um, sorry, we've been away for a little while. Again, we've, we've come bad by that, but uh, we're going to try and change things as we have quite a few bookings coming up. So these hopefully will be a bit more regular. Uh, I'm actually just by myself today because uh, Darren and James have been a bit busy recently. So um, hopefully I'll get them in again and we'll get someone to come to the flat and we'll do do an episode like that again. But as for now, I've got a new co-host with me. Um, this is um, joining me is my old buddy, Nick Brownlee Sayers. You there, Nick? Hello. Hey. How are we How's doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah. Looking forward to to getting into this. It feels like, uh, yeah, it feels like we've kind of risen from the ashes a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, Nick and I go back at, go back uh, quite a bit because... Uh, uh, we used to play in a band together, like going back a, a, a decent way, ten, fifteen years, surely. Oh, at least, yeah. Yeah, no. Looking forward to getting into this. Uh, yeah, it, we've got some pretty, pretty interesting guest lines up, especially the one today. I'm really kind of excited yeah, to get into yeah, that. And, yeah, we'll we'll get into uh, about who that is in a second. Yeah, I guess. Do you want to just maybe kind of talk about the comings and goings, anything that's been been going on in in the world? Um, in- yeah, it was something in the music world. You know, obviously on the podcast, we normally start out with like, w- what's been happening, uh, shows, what we've... Oh, um, what shows have I been to since the last podcast? Oh, I went to a couple. I went to... Um, well, I'll talk about the second one first. I went to Wonder Years co-headline tour with Mayday Parade, which I... I so I so I contribute to that website, dyingscene.com sometimes, and, and they were very kind enough to send me along to review that show. So I went to that, which was which was cool. Did you read my review, Nick? Uh, I did. Friend? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I did. Yeah, I read it. I read it, mate. Yeah, yeah. But you know, let's let's kind of use this podcast for you know podcasting and not plugging your yeah. own. Uh... No, oh yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Sorry, that was. It's perfectly fine. I, I mate. promise I didn't intend to do that. And the, and the other <laughs> show I went to earlier that week was uh, I talk about this with our guest in a bit because he's really good friends with this band and and they actually manage him, which is crazy. And he produced their last album, and that was Good Charlotte at, at Ali Pali. Yeah, I'm yet I'm yet to see any uh, any gig or bands at Ali Pali. It's definitely been been on my list for a while have in been, terms of have, event have venue. Have you been to the venue itself before? No, no, nothing. No, okay. Yeah, um, yeah so it's insane, mate. It's insane. Trying to yeah, f- it, try and find the right really gig nice to go to. And, yeah, no, I was I was I was hugely impressed. Uh, I mean, they're a band that when they play you know big arenas and stuff, it it works with their style of music. But it definitely yeah. It was definitely awesome that night. What about you? You've been to any shows recently? No, not really, mate. Living in the northeast of England, there, uh, yeah, not many people come our way. But yeah, no, I try and obviously get down and see a few things down your way when I can. A bit disappointed to, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get to that good Charlotte show, but um, so that's gigs. Uh, any any new releases that have caught your eye in the last? Um, I, I just or, literally or, saw or, one a couple of days ago. I haven't actually listened to it yet, but I'm sure you have. That I've seen the uh, seen Teenage Bottle Rocket have, have, have brought out a new record. You, you, yeah, given that? I hate to say it because I, because I, they're a band I really enjoy, but that, that EP, uh, sorry, that full length just uh, wasn't landing at all for me, man. It was, uh, oh, the songwriting just didn't seem up to it for me. I, I you know, I don't, I'd, I'd love to try and get them on the podcast at some point. So I don't want to be too rude about it, but like, yeah, yeah, just wasn't, wasn't, wasn't loving it at all. Like, particularly after a four year gap, you'd expect. Yeah, mate. level of songwriting, you know, because I mean, they always kind of do the same thing on every album, but it's you know that's what you go to them for. But it's it wasn't solid stuff. Yeah, I'll yeah, give it a listen. Know. Yeah, give, give it a listen, listen and let me know thing. what you think. Yeah, and like well, with us because obviously we've got a few guest books, so we'll be doing these more regularly. So it will just be it will not be long before we're back on the podcast. And, and if it, I, I suppose I, I saw Bouncing Souls put out a new EP that people seem to be getting excited about. I, 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 you know, I've only given it one listen, but it sounded, sounded all right. You know, don't know if I'm going back to it or not. I'm kind of a casual Bouncing Souls fan, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know? Okay. Cool. Well, you yeah, definitely. Vitamin. Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely check it out. Um, like, yeah, probably, probably the same as you kind of dived in and out over the years. And, yeah. You know, kind of enjoy, enjoy a good, good bit of that stuff. So yeah, I'll give it, give it a listen. We'll see. All right. Nice, nice one. Nice. So yeah. So, got- anything else? What you're right. I got Sorry, yeah, I got my slam dunk tickets the other the other the other day, so yeah. looking forward looking forward to that. Yeah, you get you're going to the Leeds one, right? Yeah, so I'm going I'm staying up north, a bit closer oh, at home. Yep. Seen all yep. the states. Just going to the Hatfield one. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so, so all the stages stages got released. So there's definitely oh, yeah. some yeah, stages I'll be I'll be I'll be swaying towards, and st- some I'll definitely be staying away from. In fact, one sec, I'm going to get the. Well, I think whilst you're doing that, I think the th- the, the three big ones are that the you know the Fat Mike Punkin Drublick stage. Yeah. You got you got no effects, bad religion, lesson Jake, Lagwagon, Mill and Colin, Interrupters, Anti Flag, who I'm really excited to see this this time around following their their, their last record. <laughs> following that the, the 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 MDDN album. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. No, I was never a massive anti flag fan, but you know, that's that yeah, really really excited to yeah. see them after that. I mean that's obviously a really strong stage. I reckon I'll be there be there for a for a fair bit. Obviously you've got that big monster stage, you know, new new fun glory. I, I want to go see Simple Plan. I'm not ashamed to say it. Oh, um, you and me both, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll take or leave all time low. I wouldn't mind seeing Neck Deep. Like, you know, they kind of, they get on my tits a bit, but, um, like some of their, some of their tracks are, you know, are really, really strong. I wouldn't mind seeing them live. Yeah. Uh, and then there's that dicky, dicky stage, isn't there? You've got the men zingers, get up, get up kids, like, Nice yeah. a day as well. Yeah, yeah re- really up for seeing seeing a couple of those. And then we, yeah, we'll maybe not bash all the other spans on all the other stages that we'll stay at. I see the, ga- the gallows are getting back together, right? Uh, yeah. Nice. What are they? They're on that glass yeah. door stage. Yeah, yeah, the- yeah. So yeah, yeah, counting down, counting down to that now. And yeah. hopefully we'll get a couple of we'll get a couple of guests on here before before Slam Dunk if we can. Um, that yeah, I hope, I hope so. Maybe he's not giving too much away in terms of things we've got in the works, but. No. No, no. But yeah, yeah, really looking forward to that. Cool. I don't know if you want to get yeah. it, get into it with 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 our guest and uh, yeah, kind of. This yeah, this is this is a really cool guest. I, I think so. The last podcast we had when we were doing this section that you and I are doing now, that that, that new Mark Hoppus, uh, Alex Gaskoff, and uh, Simple Creatures has been announced. So we were discussing that and like just saying our thoughts yeah. about it. And then um, James, I think, asked if Feldman introduced it. I was like, no, no, this guy, Zach Safini, yeah. did it. And like when I said that, I wouldn't have expected him to be our next podcast guest. Yeah. But- he's maybe not so, so known by his name, but, you know, but, you know, by the, by the people he's worked with, I think, you know, really yeah. kind of sp- I mean, speaks, his- speaks to the, the real volumes. You know, you got Blink, Good Charlotte, Goldfinger, All Time Low, Five Seconds of Summer, Sleeping with Sirens, Stay Champs, The Use, Architects are True, like, it just goes on and on, doesn't it? So. It's in, yeah, it's insane. Um, and he's recently just done something with Young Blood, and who's obviously coming up and is really big, and then Halsey, who's fucking huge in the pop world, with Travis Barker playing drums on, on that. He's super good friends with Travis and Mark from Ding 182. And like I say, like, you know, he's very recently produced and co-written this, this new Mark Hoppus project. So I reached out to, you know, like I've, I've reached out to a few people recently and he, he was one of them and I, I was come on and have a chat with us. So he did. And, um, this is the said chat. Okay. And we should be joined by Mr. Zach Safini all the way from LA right now. Zach, are you there, man? Hello. Hello. Hey, Zach. I'm out in beauteous, sunny Los Angeles, California. Very jealous. Right now. <laughs> Very jealous of you right now. <laughs> yeah, what is it cold over there? It's it's a little on the chilly side. Yeah, we um we had like we had a weird February where it was quite warm, um, but now it's back to sort of normality. Uh so my co host Nick's up in the northeast of Newcastle where it, where it's a little chillier even there. So is it cold up there, Nick? Yeah, it's absolutely freezing. Um so yeah, we are we are missing sun. Uh, hopefully, it'll be on us before long. So, <laughs> yeah, we have a bit bit to wait yet. So we're still still in the midst of spring here. Ugh, so. Brutal. Yeah, brutal. So, yeah. so it's presumably it's late morning for you there, is it? Right? Um. Yeah. What time is it? Yeah, it's like eleven a.m. Yeah, I usually get to the studio between like nine and ten and start the yeah. day pretty much. Cool. So, so you you're speaking to us from the studio right now. Yep. Yeah, I'm sitting in my studio. So um, I have a room at a place called MDDN. And, oh, um, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Madden. Yeah, yeah. Y- yeah. So, yeah, a little bit about my studio. Um, Go on. It, it used to be called the Boom Boom Room. It was owned by Will Smith for many years. And, like, it, it was, it was <laughs> like, it was a hip hop studio. And, like, I mean, like, yeah, all the, all the Will Smith stuff was done here, obviously. But, um, but yeah, like, uh, there's tons of, on the walls, there's tons of plaques. Single Ladies was done here. Tons of Justin Bieber stuff was done here. If you look up online, you can see pictures of Beyonce in my room and, and Pink. <laughs> and yes, yeah, it's, it's really cool. 
Um, but so yeah, so it's oozing with creative genius and atmosphere. <laughs> I guess it is. It is. Well, um, Benji and Joel from the band Good Charlotte purchased it, I think, four years yeah. ago, and they run a management company out of here, and they manage a ton of cool bands, like uh, a band called Architects, Good Charlotte, a band called Water Parks, and a bunch of other stuff. And they manage me as well. Um, and so Benji and Joel with their brother Josh and and my friend yeah. Joey um, take care of me, and it's amazing. That's amazing, man. Yeah, I've, I've I've kept a close eye on MDDN ever since they started that up, and like it's always been a really interesting roster that they've had on there. Like kind of um, you know a few things you'd expect, but then like a few uh, curveballs on there. Like I remember, I don't know if she still is, but I know Jesse J was on on there for a while. I seem to remember, and mm-hmm. yep, it, it was it seemed like a really cool thing that's that's. Uh, Going like how how did how did you first become involved with them? Um, well, my story is pretty long, but the short story of how I got involved with them was I worked for a producer named John Feldman for a super long time, and we did a good Charlotte record, and um, then we did a five seconds. Of, right? Yep, it's called Youth Authority, and then we did a five seconds of summer record called Sounds Good, Feels Good. To, I think it was happening at the same time as that, and Benji and Joel wrote a lot on that so i basically i made two records with them and we just became really good friends and yeah if you want to just like have this studio and like stay here that would be sick and i was like cool (laughs) which is pretty crazy yeah but yeah yeah but yeah we're we're just we're just friends and yeah i'm very 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 grateful for that oh that's cool man um well nick and i are both uh huge gc fans and particularly of benji and joel so i definitely want to jump into that a little bit more uh as we get further on but like I was just, um, just I, I guess just to start with, like, so obviously you said you, you know, you got into this business like working for Feldman. So how far going back was it that you started um, working with John? Um, well, I guess back, I started recording bands when I was in high school. I was about 14 years old and okay. I just started recording tons of local metal bands and, you know, like all kinds of local bands and stuff. Um, yeah, and what, then what part of the country are you from? Um, I'm from a state called Connecticut in the Northeast. Okay. Yeah. It's right, yeah. right by New York. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there was a lot of like hardcore and metal coming out of there, like bands like Kill Switch Engage and yeah. the Acacia Strain and bands like that um, coming out of there. So that was what I, what I grew up on and what I was like, what I loved. And then um, one day I met up with this producer named Machine. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him at all. He's done I a lot of Lamb of he's done like lamb of god every time i die like four years strong a bunch of stuff like that and him and he had this another producer named will putney that he worked with as well um and they were amazing and they just kind of took me under their wing when i was about 19 years old which was super cool and then uh machine wanted to move to texas and we were working out of new jersey and i wanted to move to los angeles so he recommended me to feldman and then Feldman took me in about 2013. So that was, that was like five or six years ago. Um, and yeah, I started as an intern for Feldman. And as the story goes, his engineer left a couple months in and I jumped in the chair and that was it. So, yeah. So, so I guess, I, I mean, how, how does your kind of relationship work or how did it work with John kind of a, in that kind of learning phase was, I mean, uh, you know, what, what, what kind yeah. of your... Your, your your role beside each so other. So it was very much like apprentice to the master. Um, John gave me yeah. a lot of responsibility, and he's he has extremely he's crazy talented dude. He has extremely high standards for things, mm-hmm. um, and we work really fast. We pump out a lot of different stuff. Um, so basically, John is an absolutely prolific songwriter i would consider him a songwriter before anything else he's like he can write songs like nobody's business is insane um so he would he would basically would write a song and then bring it to me and then i would kind of do up a version of it like produce like produce it basically and then we would just bounce production ideas off of each other until the song was finished Mm -hmm. um at a very high rate of speed (laughs) what? <laughs> right, wow. So, what, yeah. so when you first became like his engineer, when the engineer left, what was the first record you worked on with him? Um, the first record I worked on with him was a band called We Are the In Crowd. Oh yeah, they were yeah. like kind I, of a they were kind of them. like a pop yeah. rock band. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah signed yeah. to Hopeless Records. Yeah. Um, 
and yeah, they they've gone on to. I don't think they're a band anymore, but they've gone on to be like a, their bass player. Mike's a friend of mine. He manages a band called Against the Current. Um, so we're still friends. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I saw, yeah. We, we saw them on tour with Charlie actually. Against oh, cool, awesome. Yeah, um, sorry. Yeah. But yeah, that that was like the first record I did, and then the second record I did was Five Seconds of Summer's first record. So that was that was right. pretty cool. And like just before they blew up, like super huge, or had, yeah, that was when they had just they had only been a band for like a year or so and they were on the road with yeah. one direction so it was like they were super hot and it was extremely like that that was a crazy time in my life because those guys are extremely close friends of mine and we kind of grew up together and we've come up together like in the industry and in los angeles together so that's kind of a cool thing but yeah that that was crazy um yeah you, you see this you see a lot the same with with john and, and those boys they seem to be really tight with his family and you see you know all all the stuff on social media with you know you know all the five seconds of summer boys sharing kind of dinners and, and all sorts so yeah it's, yeah oh, it's clear you're all you're all pretty pretty tight with yeah yeah they're great dudes great friends like yeah we always have a great time together which is awesome and then uh and yeah then we had a a amazing couple of years after that we did five seconds of summer and then that turned into all time low into sleeping with sirens mm -hmm. into stick to your guns into one okay rock and good charlotte and five seconds of summer again and blink 182 so it was it was just wild yeah that's insane i was just coming to that what, what was that like working on uh california um it was record? it was pretty surreal like you yeah. don't it's it's the weirdest feeling to be friends with and be almost peers with people that you look up to so much sure. is really cool. Um, Travis and Mark particularly have become extremely good friends of mine um, from Blink. Um, and working on that album, I was just, it, it, was, it was about a two month process and it was just great. They're amazing people, like super nice people, super cool, insanely talented. And, it's it's always just funny to throw up the mics and hear Travis playing in the next room while you're watching him is is always very fun and hear Mark singing it's it's really cool but yeah it was awesome yeah well I think when we when we all heard that that record it was you kind of in, in the works we were all just kind of waiting and and kind of hoping that it was going to be you know what it, what it became like and I guess you know it, it must be amazing to know that you were kind of such a big part of that I guess really. Um, yeah, I, I think that it was it was the exact thing that they needed at the time. They kind of switched singers, which is a huge move, and they just needed to come out swinging with a banging record full of banging songs, and I think that's exactly what they got. So so, so what was kind of, I mean, what was that dynamic like with kind of Matt, Matt kind of introduced to that fold in terms of like, you know, in the studio and the kind of writing and, and production side? Did it, did it just kind of just, does it just kind of work or, was, you know, was it? Was there things that they kind of worked, went away and worked on themselves and brought to you guys? I mean, how, 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 did, that, how did that work? Um, they, so they, them and John would come up with all the songs together. The three of them and John in one room, basically, with me at the computer was how it worked. Um, having Matt in the band, to me, seemed very natural. I mean, he wasn't nervous or anything, and he contributed ideas just as much as anyone else was. And it was just as if he'd been in the band forever to me, pretty much. So it seemed super natural, um, which was really cool. I don't, you know, I'm kind of jumping all around here, but I guess this is linked to the Blink thing. So obviously uh, you say that you've become like pretty good friends with Mark and Travis and, and like you've done stuff with both of them separately recently. So um, yeah, the, the most, um, so the Mark thing, I, I guess at the time of recording, that is, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's out the end of next week worldwide, 29th of March, I think. Um, yep. the, the world's heard two songs from, from Simple Creatures um mark mm -hmm. hoppers and alex gascarf like how how did how did um you get involved with that did, did they approach you having worked with both of them in their own bands like um so so simple creatures basically mark hit me up one day and was just like what are you doing and i was like just chilling at the studio and he was like i'm not on tour forever and i'm super bored we should just get together and make some music and i was like okay. cool so mark came in and we wrote a song and we had a really, really long talk and was he that... talked about how, sorry, go what's on. up? No, no, go on. Sorry. sorry, um, sorry. Yes. Yeah, so he, he talked about 
how he wanted to make solo record because he'd never really done that before. Mm -hmm. And he wanted the record to be a collaboration between him and he wanted to have a different guest on every song. For instance, he could have Brendan Urie or Tim Armstrong from Rancid or just different friends that he's made over the years that he's wanted to collaborate with. He just wanted to make a project with all of them. And I was like, that sounds amazing. And the first person that we brought in the next day was Alex. Yeah. And it just was super natural and it sounded great. And so we asked Alex to come back again the next day and he did. And I think a day or two later, Mark was like, do you want to just start a band right, like right. you and I to Alex? And Alex was like, yeah. And that's pretty much how Simple Creatures was born, which is super cool. It's very, very organic. Yeah, that's so cool. Uh, which, uh, did, so did, yeah, which did, I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Did, did, so did Hoppus come to you because like he was impressed with like what you did, wh whatever you contributed when you were working on that California record, or had you done enough stuff sort of on your own in your own right at that point? That I, I think that well, working on California, we just were around each other so much and knew each other so much. And we've become friends too, you know, we text about recording and producing and gear all the time and stuff. So we just become good friends. And then after California, Mark still writes and works with a bunch of different artists with Feldman as well. And sometimes with me too. And we basically just became friends and, you know, he knew that he knew that I could produce things, I guess, <laughs> from like working with me on the Blink-182 album. Um, and, uh, and yeah, yeah, he, he just wanted to make a solo record and needed a producer for it. And I guess naturally I just came to his mind as the guy to do that because we got along well and we knew that we made good music together. So that's, yeah, that's that relationship pretty much. So I, I, we kind of, we've seen you've, you've done a few, few bit of vocals yourself on some of these records. Uh, I mean, is that something you've ever thought of kind of Wait, what, exploring? Have what, ever, what know, have I done? Band, vocal? Do you, you know? <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Wait, does it say I'm well, something on the internet or something? It, it was uh, a GC really? vocal. Really? Oh, def I, that's that's got to be a mistake. It, I, that, is, yeah, is I'm definitely not a singer. That's got to be some kind of mistake. Yeah, it's only <laughs> my girlfriend Lucy sings on it on a ton of things that oh, I do, but okay. not me. Oh, speaking speak, um, but speaking of whom, I I'm sure I saw on Twitter or something. Is is there a song named after her on the Simple Creatures uh, EP? Yeah, she she finds her way into everything that I do. I I'm big. I I have a lot of weird production techniques, and one of the things I like to do is I like to layer female vocals with male vocals very very subtly. Um, it just sounds really cool a lot of the time. And so anytime I need a girl, she's my girl. Like for instance, do you guys know that band Fever Three Three Three? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You heard of them? Um, yeah. yeah, I did their last record and. I was in the studio with the singer Jason and yeah. he was like, I, he was like, I just want the intro of this album to be uh, like a news reporter talking to me, a news reporter in a riot. We just need a female news reporter saying things about there being a riot and people fighting and stuff. And I was like, yeah, let me just call up Lucy. And um, she came and fake was a fake record reporter. <laughs> and now the, the intro of the record is her like being a fake reporter. Same thing with the last good Charlotte album. Joel was like, I just want a girl. I want the intro to be this ethereal thing with a girl like is, is that singing. On better, is that Better Demons? Which song was that on? No, no. it's it's the, so the song called Generation RX. Oh, OK. Is the, the intro. It's, it's the, the, the very intro of yeah, the album. Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, she did that one, too. So, yeah, it's kind of funny. And then when like Fever just toured with Bring Me and yeah. Good Charlotte just did an arena tour and they open with those intros so it's hilarious That's to just so like cool, man. go to those go to those shows yeah, and yeah. hear her voice like played <laughs> to 15,000 people is cool. Um but yeah the the simple creatures thing so her name is Lucy and um I was in the studio with Mark and Alex one day and we were just talking and Mark was like when are you going to make an honest woman out of Lucy <laughs> and I was like I don't know and then he was like we should just make that the song title and i was like cool and that's what happened and that's what I <laughs> down. okay nice <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> um so so the minute like do you work with feldman at all anymore or are you just out on your own now yeah um we work together when it makes sense like oh, okay. for instance we um i started making the fever 333 album with him and I left before that album was done mm -hmm. so i wound up mixing that whole album for him oh okay and um so yeah yeah we we still we still work together and we still see each other sometimes for sure yeah 
Um, yeah, yeah, I'm always I'm always down to mix anything he does, 100. percent Cool. Is there is there anything out there that you would like love to get your hands on? Any any particular artist that you have a real burning desire to Ooh, to kind of work with? I have been working with my dream artist currently, and I'm not at liberty to discuss <laughs> it right now. But but uh, it, very 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 stoked. There's some some cool things coming. Oh, that's, that is very exciting. Um, one artist that I would love to work with that I haven't worked with that seems pretty out of touch is slipknot oh, okay. they're my favorite band of all time and yeah it'd, it'd be awesome it'd be awesome to work with them but um that said i mean i'm very fortunate and i've gotten to work with so many bands that i love slipknot would be amazing and my chemical romance i also think would be amazing um but yeah other than that i'm i've been i'm very excited so yeah cool so when it, when do we expect to hear about this mystery project have you got any kind of <laughs> i have time no timeline that? whatsoever yeah, but be progress. on the lookout. Okay. So is this uh, is this what you're in the studio working on at the minute? Um, I'm always kind of working on a bunch of different things. I'm always kind of bouncing around. Today I am. I mix everything. So Travis Barker produces a bunch of stuff, and I mix pretty much everything that he produces nowadays, which I love doing. Right now, he he did an EP with a group called Suicide Boys. Yeah, yeah. They're like a really hard. They call it trap metal or something, but it's basically this hard trap rap group with Travis on drums and monkey from corn on guitar, which is super sick. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, I love, cor I love corn. Yeah, so I'm, I'm mixing that EP oh, right now. Cool. I remember a while back seeing like a bunch of Instagram photos, of like Feldman and Travis and monkey all hanging out. You were probably in some of them as well. So that's yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw sleeping with sirens mentioned that you're doing their, their new record. Do I imagine that? Or is that? Yep. I'm also working on that today, wrapping oh, that man. up. Um, we finished, yeah, that, that one's been, that one's been a process. We started that one back in September and it's, it's near, it'll be done by the end of the month. It's very, very close to done. Okay. Um, but very, very stoked on that record as well. That, that one's going to be a good one. It's, it's very, it's extremely heavy. The heaviest record they've ever okay. made by far. Yeah. I, I'm quite keen to just jump, if we can, a little bit more into Generation RX because just because I, I, I really enjoyed that record and obviously along with the Madden, just like you yeah. were the sole producer on that. Mm -hmm. Cool question, I know, but like, how was that experience? Growing up, Good Charlotte, Good Charlotte was pretty much my favorite band. When I was in, when I was in middle school, I was obsessed with Avril Lavigne, and I was obsessed with the album Young and the Hopeless by, by Good Charlotte, which was super cool. And the guy that produced the album Young and the Hopeless, his name's yeah. Eric Valentine, and he's my favorite producer of all time he's unbelievable his stuff sounds amazing it's mm -hmm. super cool so with those two things it was kind of intimidating to have benji and joel come to me and be like we want to we want you to produce our album i was a little bit intimidated but they were they were like just do your thing they 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 said that they wanted it they've always wanted to play in a metal band basically just because they think it'd be fun and they were like, we just want to do something that's the heaviest that we've ever done. And just we, we were all going through some kind of dark times in our lives as well. And I think you can hear that a lot in the record. It was very therapeutic mm -hmm. for them. And it's it's a pretty angry, angsty record um, that needed to happen for their career. And because they just needed to get all that stuff out. And the songs are super fun for them to play live. But work, working with Benji and Joel is is a really unique thing because so typically Benji and I will create some kind of music bed, whether it be a riff or some chords or a drum yeah. beat or something. And then I'll just throw that on a loop for like 20 minutes. And Joel will jump in the vocal booth and just start making noise and just singing. And then 20 minutes later, we have a chorus or sometimes an entire song, which is, which is crazy. And so that's the way a lot of rappers and hip-hop artists right is that their producers will make a beat okay. and they just get in the booth and just start freestyling and then that's that gets pieced together into a song that's kind of the same way we make good charlotte songs which is really cool to me because i don't know anyone else and, who does it like your that experience have they always done that did they do that on that youth authority record which obviously you worked in a bit as well yep yeah the, yeah they always do it they always do it like that they're not really the they're not really the kind of guys that you sit down with with an yeah. acoustic guitar and just kind of piece together a song. I mean, they, they're more than capable yeah. of doing that, of course, but it's, it's crazy that they can just get in the booth and just instantly come up with something that sounds amazing. So yeah, that's, that's how they always work whenever I've worked with them, okay. which is awesome. What, what, what's your personal favorite of that album, that, that generation? Art? 
There's a song called Shadow Boxer, and that's my favorite song. Yeah. Yeah, that I, I love that song. It's it's one of the heaviest ones of the album and it's it just it it's it's really cool. Nice. I love that closing track, that uh, California song. I think that's that's a great pop song. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the last one that we did actually. Oh, yeah. Joel was like Joel was like, We just need something kinda happier that may <laughs> potentially bridge into Oh. some future music <laughs> okay um <laughs> but yeah something to be like something to kind of leave the album on a little bit of a happier note and i was like cool and then we made that and yeah i like that one a lot it's weird because uh, you you guys have got obviously different favorites to me as well i think that record you kind of can pull out di- you know different different ones based on your personal kind of taste but prayers and better demons for me are, oh nice are, are really the standouts cool. on on generation rx for me yeah love, yeah love, yeah love yeah, yeah. yeah prayer prayers for sure prayers is a song that i see becoming like a classic good charlotte song because it's 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 super hard with bands like that like like i just saw limp biscuit this past weekend oh, yeah, i saw it on your and instagram yeah. all, and all all i want to hear are the hits and they came out and they played their seven hit songs and then just left the stage which i was i i actually thought i actually thought that was really cool i don't know if you guys are limp biscuit fans but they played break stuff second and i was oh, like wow. that's a power move <laughs> yeah that's the power and move. yeah it was it was insane so yeah it's it's really hard for bands like that to have new music that stands up to their old music sometimes yeah. um but we try so yeah but pray- prayers is the song that i see going down in good charlotte history as like the song from that well, album for sure i actually went to that and i love that song i went to that arena tour that you just mentioned before um when they, so they did they, they did one london date which was their biggest ever london show they played they played the place called alexandra palace which is huge and, yeah uh, cool how was that oh, man it was amazing it was amazing uh like, oh, that's awesome yeah, I, took, I, I took my girlfriend with me who who it was very inexperienced with good charlotte but she knew i was a huge fan she and she was just blown away you know 38 year old woman seeing them for the first time and she's like yeah it's amazing <laughs> but yeah that song sounded fucking oh, that's, nice that's man. so cool that's so cool man that's awesome cool so what else we got here um so what what about I, yeah i guess we just want to ask about what you kind of do do obviously you're super busy with all these projects is there anything you, you get into kind of outside of the music world when you're kind of downtime uh i try to work out i it, it's it's a hard thing it's the weirdest thing about my career is that my hobby became my profession and it's kind it's kind yeah. of when i was younger i was never good at sports or anything music was and once I picked up a guitar and started recording myself, I just knew that I was kind of good at it, I guess, because I sucked at everything else. Um, and then I just worked really, really hard at that. And that became what I do. That became my job. I've I've never mm-hmm. technically worked a day in my life. I've never had a real job before. I've, I've only done this. <laughs> I only know this. So that being said, there's I, I hang out with my girlfriend and stuff, but there is not really much out of the music world that i do and it 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 kind yeah. of it's it's kind of it's kind of weird cuz i'll try to do other things and i do other things but i just i'm just obsessed with music man i just can never stop thinking about music and recording and how to make my stuff sound better and how to make better songs and i'm just completely obsessed with it so i definitely work a lot more than i should <laughs> i think but to answer to, what kind of what kind of hours do you do? What kind of hours do you do in the studio? Then are you kind of you in there all night? You kind of start late 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 um, morning or so it, you know what's your what's your kind of daily routine? Yeah, like? so I'm 25 years old now. Um, when I from when I was about 17 to about 23, I worked all night every night and almost all day every day. Like through the Feldman days, I was like I was really putting in the hours. I was working like crazy, and then um when i started doing stuff on my own i try to start around 9 or 10 a.m and i try to wrap up by midnight but that fluctuates sometimes i'll have an artist that likes to work really late and if the artist likes to work late and that's the Mm -hmm. when i'm gonna get the best out of them then of course i'm gonna work late Mm. and then that will kind of screw me up for a few days and so for instance i had a session on saturday that went from 9 p.m till 7 a.m which that's not typical i don't do that very often but i'm still a little bit messed up from that right now (laughs) can you tell us who that was with or is that one under wraps uh 
I unfortunately cannot <laughs> say who that is with. I don't. I don't mean to be that guy that's like I. I can't tell you what I'm working on. Blah blah blah. But I can't tell you about that one. <laughs> we understand. Um, I, I suppose like one another huge thing you've done recently. We did that. Um, that that lad from Doncaster. Is he from Doncaster, Nick? That young blood. Yep. Young young blood. Yeah, he's for Doncaster. Yeah, boy, yeah, yeah, he's the best. So like, yeah. Did you produce that song that he did with Travis Barker and 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 Halsey? Or, or yes, did you just I did. Mix? Oh, okay. Oh, sweet man. Okay. Yeah. So so that song was a collaboration. So one of my best friends um, that I met in college, his name is Chris Griotti, and him and I produced a bunch of things together. We work with a girl named Grimes a bunch. We work with a girl named Poppy a bunch, and. Um, we co-produce all of the young blood stuff together. So we, we do that all. And we, so we produced that song and we also used pieces, production pieces from another one of his producers, who's from the UK named Matt Schwartz, who worked with massive attack and a bunch of stuff like that back in the day. Um, what, yeah, which is really cool. So that, so that song was, a was, uh, Maddie sent us a guitar part and we produced, a track around that basically um but yeah that was that was a tag team between all of us okay so uh, what what's the yeah. young bird and horse you'd like to work with um obviously you knew travis already yeah amazing um young blood is a new friend of mine we started working together in uh, in like october and whenever he's in town whenever he's not on tour we're pretty much in the studio every day he's he gets in town i think next week or the week after next and he he's just he's incredible man he's one of the most prolific artists i've ever worked with he can come up with songs like crazy he's super charismatic and imaginative and he he he's a a true artists are hard to come by these days i think just people that that really are gung-ho about what they do and really work their asses off and really are creatively amazing and he's he is all of those things like he's a he's a real rock star he's one of my favorite people i've ever worked with if not my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice, um, I should, I shouldn't say my favorite. I won't pick favorites, but, but he, he yeah, he's incredible. He's amazing. Mm. Yeah. So you kind of work with young blood. We see, we, we seen you work with, we done some work with the architects as well. Is there any kind of any other UK bands that you kind of are on your radar um, or are you looking to work? Yeah, with actually. Yeah. In? There's a lot of cool stuff. So my friend Phil lives out there in the UK. He is, he was a front of house guy for bring me the horizon for a really long time. And then he was with Architects for a while, and then he was with All Time Low, and now he's with Five Seconds of Summer. And him and I, he he produces things as well. So him and I, I I mix a lot of stuff he does, and we we work together a lot as well. But I just mixed a record for a band called Deaf Havana not too long yeah. ago. Do you guys yeah, know, we them? know them? They're, they're, um, they're kind of big over here. Yeah, like they've been like on mainstream radio. Yeah. And stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. That- Cool. Yes. So he 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 produced them, and I mixed that record, and and I love that record. And then there's a brand new band coming out of there called Hot Milk. Have you guys heard of them at all? No, I don't. I, I don't know about you. Nick. No, I can't I say that. It's no. check 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 them out. They're amazing. It's a it's a girl, a girl and a boy, and they're managed. The way I know them is they're managed by my friends Gus and Jake, who manage Mark Hoppus from Blink. Um, they're they're a new project that they're developing, and. I produced a couple songs for them and then I mixed their new EP that's about to come out that my friend Phil produced and they're, they're incredible. They're, they're one of my favorite bands out of the UK for sure. And um, yeah, obviously Ar- Architects is one of my favorite bands of all time. So working with them is always amazing. Um, and then there is, isn't there a band called Loathe over there? Loathe. Have you heard of them? They're, they're like a super heavy band. Uh, I think, nah. I think they're from the UK, but, but they're okay. Yeah, they're sick. But yeah, I, I love UK music. I love I love being over there and I love the the way you, you people do things over there is the awesome. Floor. Yeah, I went over there a couple of years ago. We did for five seconds of summer's second album, we did a bunch of strings over there with the London Symphony Orchestra Philharmonic or something, which that was that was that was amazing. That was really crazy. And then I just went over there in December for a week with Young Blood and we just wrote a bunch of songs for a week. We rented out a studio that Adele made a bunch of made rolling in the deep in and a bunch of other things. So that was super cool to work over there. Yeah. What 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 part of London was that in? Do you remember? That was in 
Man, I literally got off the plane, went to the studio, <laughs> and didn't sleep for a week and went back home. So I don't really remember anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think Kensington, Kensington, is that is that a thing? K- Kensington. Ken- Kensington. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's where. Oh, okay, that's where it was. Sorry, Nick. Were you going to say something before? Yeah, I was just you know kind of talking. Well, I wanted to talk about you, you know you've be you've as part of your kind of journey you've kind of started kind of working with pop punk and rock but you know it seems like you're kind of branching out a bit now into kind of different genres is is that the kind of way you're going is there any other kind of any other avenues yeah and, well and something genres, that you know I, you're kind of looking that to i explore? kind of pride myself on i or I, I could go on and on about this but um as music evolves more and and budgets shrink and things and just the way music is going people are kind of losing the art of recording live instruments in my opinion because hip-hop is so dominant and so dominating and i I love that stuff but there's not really live drums or live guitars on too much of it and if it is it it rarely sounds good and so the thing that i try to do i'm not a hip-hop producer whatsoever but the thing that i try to do is kind of know enough about that and by working with travis and other people um i kind of am immersed in that world a little bit and so being able to being able to just kind of do anything is the goal like a lot of people don't know but i came up producing strictly death metal and then (laughs) and then i worked with it but i but i love emo music as well and then i worked with feldman for so long and that was a lot of pop punk and pop rock type stuff so that's the kind of stuff that i'm definitely best at doing but um, I kind of like it when an artist such as Halsey yeah. that isn't known for making rock music comes to me and wants to make something that's still her, but that has more of a rock flavor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's what's exciting to me is when, when, like, for instance, I would love it if Ariana Grande came to me and said, I want to make a rock song yeah. and see what that would sound like. That's, that's the kind of stuff that I think is cool. Kind of blending the genres and seeing, seeing what's what. Is, is there any genres that you would hands down stay away from? Like, uh, any genres that you detect, you know, like kind of mainstream <sighs> genres. I know we don't have to get too obscure here but are um, you kind of open to most most mainstream genres i mean if you want like a dr luke pop sounding record i'm probably not the guy <laughs> to come yeah. to for that but <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah if, if you if you come to me you want things that are rocking that are banging with guitars and drums and that kind of thing that's just what i love doing and if you come to me and you don't want that then you're probably coming to the wrong person i would say cool did you grow up around music a lot then? I mean, you know, is your family kind of, what kind of music were you kind of? Um, to be honest, not yeah, really. My dad listened to a small. lot of Kiss and things like that in Europe and things from the 80s. And my mom listened to like a lot of Elton John when I was a kid. So I really didn't grow up around too much music, but it is strange that I do what I do and that my little brother actually is a professional opera singer, oh, wow. which not many people know, which, which, yeah. So that's, that's kind of cool too. Um, but my parent, my parents were in band in high school, but they are not involved in music whatsoever. And, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. I think it's maybe because they didn't do that, that I was so interested in it or something. Um, and I would, I would never recommend to anyone that they try to start a career in the music industry. To be honest, it's 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 not an easy thing to do unless unless you're willing to completely sacrifice your entire life and give everything to it. It's probably just going to be too hard, I would think. So yeah, but but my my par- I'm from a very small town, and and it's kind of the kind of place where. You grow up and you get a job and you start a family and that kind of thing. And and not too many people leave my state or town. Like everyone that I went to high school with still lives there for the most part and stuff. And so, um, but at, but when I was there, I I just wanted to just get out and not do that for some reason. Not 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 rebelling. Like I'm not a rebellious person, but I just I just wanted to see what else was out there and see what I could do. So yeah, you're 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 the you're the, you're the guy they all talk about that's gone on and done done amazing things. Get, get it's, 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 it's possible for you when you return home. <laughs> it's possible. I don't know. <laughs> Do you like living in LA? I love living in LA. It's it's amazing. 
everyone that I know and everyone that I work with for the most part lives here or is here often. Mm -hmm. But it's really nice to get out a lot of the time. Obviously, you kind of you know you've worked with some some absolutely huge bands. But you got any kind of any advice? Kind of thinking with your kind of producer hat on for kind of you know any new bands maybe who haven't kind of spent much time in studios and are kind of making that kind of transition and jump to 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 you know kind of record some of their music. Is there anything that you would say? Yeah, any I would advice say that you if give, you're a band give, that's give trying to, to make it somewhere, you you just you have to be good. You have to make really good stuff. If you're starting a band because you want to play in a band and you want to be famous and you want to play shows and do that kind of thing, it's not going to work. You're, I, I'm only interested in working with artists that I think are going to be timeless and songs that are going to be listened to from years to come. And if, if that's not your goal, if you're not out there to create amazing things that are going to last forever, don't do it in the first place. Um, that being said, if, if that, if that is what you want to do, obviously and stuff, um, you just put a lot of effort into listening to music is the place that you will learn the most, listen to music and write amazing songs. And remember that people are always listening to you. If you make something good and it comes out, people will hear it and you will get hit up about it and you don't have to spam people's pages for that because they, they will notice. If I hear something that I love and like, I don't care how small the band is, I will hit the band up and because I love the song. So just focus on making the best music that you can is what I'd say. Makes sense, man. Like, yeah. Like, so we, we obviously don't want to steal too much of your time, Zach, because uh, we know you're a very busy man. Um, is it like, what, why, why we still got you? Is there anything like you want to plug or talk about in particular that, w that we haven't, haven't touched upon? Um, there's one particular artist that I am working with right now and that I have worked with previously that I'm especially excited about. Um, it's a girl named Poppy. Have yeah, you guys heard um, of her? I think if I'm honest with you, only from like reading more about you, I think. And like, you know, yeah. So, okay. So, um, yeah. So not really Go on. Um, tell, tell us a bit about her. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to her. She's an amazing artist. Um, just go check out her Instagram page and it's it's I don't want I don't want to give too much away by talking about her, but it's she has an extremely unique thing going on for her. And the music that we've made a couple songs that have come out recently that have been crazy and the music that we have coming is is just insane. And that's I'm I'm super, super excited about that. I just want to give a shout out to her. Um, so go check that out. So she, she has, yeah, go listen to a song called X that she has and a song called play destroy that she has. Oh, oh yeah. We'll link it in the show notes for sure. Cool. Yeah. Shout out to her. Nice. Thanks. Is there anything you want to add, Nick? No, that's been, uh, it's been really insightful, mate. And, uh, yeah, really awesome. appreciate, appreciate the time you've given. So yeah. 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 Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me guys. And that was, uh, our chat with Zach Savini. So again, we just want to, give a massive uh thanks to zach for giving us uh, his time like he's as you can hear from the conversation super busy guy mm. is it really impressive like hearing kind of the stuff he's worked on he's, and to hear, he's, here crazy, he's only right? like, 25 as well man that's that yeah that's cr that crazy what 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 he's done and what he's worked on so I, and i guess this testament to his you know his his hard work and yeah he's obviously quite... you could tell he just kind of lives and breathes it doesn't he really you know yeah yeah I mean, he's got like a, obviously a very bright future in the music world ahead of him. Like, particularly, you know, we we chatted to him after the after the podcast about a couple of stuff and what he's working on, and, and like, it's just it's just insane. Um, so with that in mind, it's even more yeah, crazy that he he gave us a, his time. Yeah, watch the space. I guess it sounds yeah. like he's got some big things around the corner. So yeah, that no, was it was really cool. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll you know we'll put links to. To a bunch of stuff that he's worked on in the show notes and and then actually on that subject um you know if, if you if you do listen to our podcast and you like it give us a subscribe on itunes um yeah so yeah subscribe and um yeah go follow us, us out, yeah, like, follow us on twitter and instagram listen on spotify yeah, yeah iTunes, anywhere else please Podbean. all of that let me just do the social links the so twitter is uh it is the wasting time P and Instagram is the wasting time podcast. 
There you go. Uh, easy to find with a quick search on either. But yeah, give us, give us a follow on those. Be much, massively appreciated. Um, we're hoping to be back real soon with some other exciting guests. We've been arranging dates and times with them. So yeah, yeah I'll see, I'll see, see you right soon. next week. Oh yeah, yeah, and I'll catch up with you Nick face to face. Yeah, of course. Cheers, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.